welcome to worship on the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. A few important announcements this morning. The first being that we are going to return to communion at the rail today. I fear that it may feel as though we've never done this before in our lives, and it is going to feel a little clunky. So please be patient with us. A few things that are different. We are going to be using wafers rather than bread for the um, foreseeable future. We will decide when it is that we will um, go back to bread <coughs> at a um, further time. Um, wine and grape juice will still be available. Those of us that are serving communion will wear masks. So regular, um, you know, uh, uh, things apply for those of you coming up that it, um, you do not need to wear masks coming up, but we who are serving, since we will be in such close proximity, um, are going to wear our masks. Um, if you would prefer to continue to receive communion in the prepackaged cups, as well as for our online community who will continue to use the communion they have at home, a blessing will still be given for the prepackaged um, communion um, offering, so you are um, able to take it in that form as well if you would like. Um, beyond that, if it is a little um, messy, um, we just ask for a little grace. We are going to make um, an effort to space family groups or community groups together, um, but with a little space in between. So if you remember pre-COVID days, we were kind of shoulder to shoulder up here at the rail. We are going to attempt to have a little bit of distance between our um, family groups. Again, probably something we should have been doing all along, um, but COVID has certainly reminded us of, of some best practices that we um, will take advantage of. Today is noisy offering, as you might have seen um, as you came in, so please drop in some um, change or um, bills as well. Uh, bills make some silent, uh, silent noise as they go into the buckets. Um, those will uh, go toward joining hands and the back to school program, which is also our July social ministry um, collection. And we'll leave a list is there of those things that they are uh, looking for. We've got a nice collection going already out in the hallway. Um, these next two weeks will be our final two weeks to collect those things. So if you are able to bring them in, um, pretty close at the uh, close of July, we will get those things over to them uh, because they are preparing their food set up and need to know what their supplies are. Um, so that kids can start coming in in mid-August um, to get their things. Please take note, um, August is shaping up to be a busy month, so we've got a lot of things on the calendar. Make sure that you have those noted so you don't miss them. Um, this coming week, uh, in terms of calendar as well, um, on Saturday, Lisa and I will be leaving for another week of vacation, so um, we will not be here next Sunday. Uh, Pastor Wayne Musler will be our supply pastor, um, and I understand he has been here before. So um, welcome him back. And um, if you have any pastoral emergencies, please get in touch with Cindy at the office, and uh, we'll get you connected where um, you can um, have support there. There is an evangelism committee meeting on uh, this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Um, and if you are interested in joining us for that, please let me know and I will get you the Zoom information for that. Um, are there any other announcements in the community? Seeing none, um, I call your attention to our celebrations this week. Um, next Saturday, the 24th, is Mariana Stern's birthday. Please uh, send up a prayer of good wishes for her um, as she celebrates her birthday. 
as well. Um, this coming Wednesday uh, is another uh, hiker meal, and um, we have continued to have a wonderful turnout for um, the dinners. It was another busy Wednesday last week with almost 30 people being fed. And so if you do have time um, to clean up, set up, help us serve, um, it is a big help. So um, please do come for that if you are able. And most especially, um, the last week, our final week um, in July, uh, we do have a number of folks who will be on vacation, and so uh, additional help is much appreciated there. With that, we will conclude our announcements and begin our service. I invite you to stand as you are. God is mighty in word and deed. God's mercy is everlasting. God has accomplished all things through Christ. So that we might live as God's own children. Let us give thanks to God. And live for the praise of God's glory. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. us. It is hard to believe that there is not to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and the key us for life. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn number 789.
people faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard Jesus was. And wherever Jesus went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each year at our Synod Assembly, the bishop offers an address to give the highlights for the year, goals and objectives, hopes and dreams, difficulties and challenges are faced by the church. This year, of course, was particularly difficult as we continue to find our way through these times created by a global pandemic, which has led us into uncharted waters. In truth, we continue to do so amidst the reality that this pandemic is not over. Globally, other nations who lack access to the vaccine are returning to shutdown measures as infection rates begin to rise again as the more dangerous Delta variant take hold. More than 4 million people have died worldwide. Africa remains only 1% vaccinated. Here at home, with more than 30,000 new cases each day, States such as Missouri and Arkansas are again asking for emergency help. Medical leaders are warning that hospitals in those areas are reaching dangerous capacities. The ICUs are filling up. These are difficult times in which we live. Difficult times for people and institutions alike. For even before COVID, the institutional church we're going through significant change. For decades, church attendance has been decreasing. <coughs> Churches have been closing. People's relationships with organized religion have been increasingly strained as frustrations with scandals and abuse have driven people away from the church to try and live their faith on their own. Bishop Dunlop, indicated that approximately 20% of the congregations in the Lower Susquehanna Synod will close over the next decade. About that many have closed this past decade. Rates of attendance at church have fallen even faster than that. But perhaps the statistic that troubled me the most was that he reported 72% of people who regularly attend church are agnostic, meaning they don't really have a deep belief about all of this one way or the other, or that they lack a deep faith. Almost three out of four people who attend church say they really don't have a deep connection to why it is they come. So if you were to ask yourself this question, why do you come to church? Either here in this building or online from home, how would you answer? Is it just a habit? Do you come because you always have? Do you come because your mom or your grandma told you that you should? Come for the community? Do you come searching for something you haven't felt in a while? For most of us, I'm guessing it's some combination 
This statistic and these questions aren't meant to be an accusation or judgment, but neither should we ignore the reality that this data points to. For in so many ways over these past decades, people have gotten lost along the way. People have stopped believing that there is a place for them in this church community. People have gotten hurt and disillusioned and confused and angry at what the church has become or shown itself to be. The church has not always been willing to meet people in a place of love and grace and acceptance. And so people stopped coming. But for those of us who are here today, we may try to hide it out of shame or guilt, but a whole lot of us, if we are honest, feel a bit lost on this journey too. Might feel a bit disconnected, feel as though we aren't quite sure where we fit in. Perhaps question just where God is amidst all of the hardships that we experience and our faith can waver. But we stay silent so that no one else might think that we are not good and faithful Christians. Our scripture readings today are for those 72% of you out there who are agnostic or lack a deep faith. They're for the other 28% too. But specifically today, God speaks to the hearts of those who have been lost along the way. Those who feel forgotten, those who have been led astray, left behind, disregarded, or ignored. Today, through the prophet Jeremiah, God raises God's own voice in lament. God's angry. God is frustrated. God lashes out in righteous anger toward those who have been placed as leaders of the people who have destroyed and scattered God's sheep. God has looked out among the people and seen the lost and the forsaken, the floundering and the fearful, and God blames the leaders, specifically the kings of Israel and Judah. God accuses them of scattering the flock, of not attending to their needs. God decries the evil of what has been done, and God steps in and says, enough. God says, I myself will gather the remnant of my flock and bring them back to the fold. God says that when all have been brought back to God, are safe and protected, they shall not fear any longer, they shall not be dismayed, and none will be missing. Those who have stopped coming to church, those who no longer feel certain in their faith, those who feel that they have been rejected by the church or their community, God says they will be gathered into one holy, unified body of people protected and cared for by the one whom God shall appoint to be the good shepherd for them. A righteous king shall be raised. A wise king shall execute justice and righteousness for all the people in all the lands. All will live in safety under the protection of this one, the one who will be shepherd according to God's purposes. For that is what a shepherd is supposed to do. That is what the image of the good shepherd offers to us. The hope and comfort that comes from those beloved words of Psalm 23 that we heard just a few moments ago. The truth spoken here is that the Lord is my shepherd, and through him I will be protected, guided, loved, cared for, fed, nourished, and blessed. Because that is the will of God. The one whom God appoints for us is the one whom God sent to dwell with us. The Christ will gather us all together as his flock, and there will be no division and 
and no hostility. There will be peace and reconciliation because God has placed God's very self between us and the dangers of this world. Jesus, our Lord and Savior and Shepherd, showed us by walking away of the cross that there is nothing from which God will not sacrifice for our protection and reconciliation. When we were scattered and wandering, it is God's goodness and mercy which shall follow us all the days of our lives. These texts today remind us that we worship our God who is very near to us and not a God who is far away. We hear this promise throughout the scriptures, from the prophets through the psalmists. God is present. God is here. And God does not deny the dangers and the evils that work in this world, that seek to do damage and harm all that God holds dear. We worship a God who confronts that evil and declares that evil shall have no authority over God's promise for this world. We worship a God who looks out upon the world with dismay and lament and calls for change. We worship a God who sees our pain and sees those whom our world has cast aside and rendered invisible. And in that knowledge, we hear good news. God tells the kings and the leaders of this world that power and leadership is a privilege. And with it comes great responsibility. Responsibility to God and responsibility to God's people. Power is to be used to provide love and care for the people. God blesses the offices of leadership so that God's hope for peace and justice in this world can be brought into tangible, visible reality. Leaders who follow God are to bring security and prosperity for all, and especially for the most who are in need. Leaders are to reject corruption, exploitation, greed, oppression, and self-centered quests for power. Dominion over people does not fulfill the gospel. And where God sees that, God says, enough. I will destroy that which has become corrupt and damaging, and God calls the people to God's self. We live in complicated times. We struggle to understand how we hold our faith in the promise of God's victory and salvation over the evils in this world. We believe that God raised Jesus from the dead out of the hands of those leaders who sought to destroy God's own Messiah and shepherd. And yet, we look around us at the valleys of the shadow of death which surround us. How do we make sense of this? Perhaps that's one of the reasons we come here. To hear the word of God in scripture, to look around us at the faces of our neighbors, and to hear the good news proclaimed so that we may be called to look up, look out from that valley to hear God's promise ringing across the land, that there is hope to be found in the arms of the crucified Messiah, who was willing to sacrifice everything and all for the sake of the sheep of his fold. For not one of us will be lost. Our God is a God of love. And if our faith does not lead us always, to a place of love, Christ-like love, then we must return again and again to our scriptures. Read again and search again. 
Yes. There is evil and cruelty in this world. Our God wants us to be clear-eyed about the dangers we face. God laments with us that this is true. God knows and God sees those places of pain and struggle that we face, and it is there in those places that God has compassion for us. God looks upon us all with love and care. The heart of the gospel, the heart of Jesus' teaching, the heart of our understanding of the foundations of our faith is that all must lead unrelentingly and unceasingly toward love of God and love of neighbor above all else. That is our work. That is our journey of faith. To seek and follow the paths of righteousness and truth that Jesus, our Savior and Shepherd, has laid out for us as a beloved flock. We trust in the word of the Lord. That word must always be a word of love and compassion and mercy and grace. When it is not, we begin again. Why do we come here? To love God and each other. The greatest commandment. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, love is the point. God is love and we form our purpose around that love. Love one another. Love our families. Love our community. Love those who are different from us. Love those who are in desperate need. Love those who are hurting and afraid. Love those who are sick and dying. Love those whom we disagree with. Love those whom we have hurt. Love those who we need to forgive. We are united by the love of Christ. That love is the foundation and cornerstone of this world, this church, and our faith. That which is not love will not stand under the refining fire of God's judgment. And so may we walk by faith, seeking the love of Christ so that we may feel it and we may share it.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our sending hymn at number 820.
Good, good, good.